Hey, what's up, everyone? It's your man, Sean Zatel. Just got done watching the fight here from the office from Keyshawn Davis. Exceeding expectations tonight in Norfolk, Virginia. Genuinely putting on a 10 out of 10, an A+. Plus. And those are always really fun to watch. He knocks out Gustavo Limos in two rounds. And really, Richardson Hitchens' fight against Lee Amparo for the IBF title at 140, that's going to tell us a lot about this performance. It's impressive either way, regardless of what happens. Hitchens and Amparo is kind of a 50-50 fight, but... If Hitchens can win that fight and become world champion, then then Keyshawn Davis just knocked out a guy in two rounds who went pretty much life or death with a guy who might be a world champion at 140. And by Keyshawn fighting Lemos, who blew the 135 pound limit, it was a blessing in disguise for him. Because if he had knocked out Lemos at 135, at the 135 limit, People would have said, hey, man, Lemos was really a 140 pounder that you drained to 135. How much, what do we really do with this knockout? Instead, he knocked out a light welterweight tonight, which shows that not only is he is he ready like he says he is for the top dogs at 135, but he's also ready, I guess, for the top dogs that moved up from 135 to 140 for Tio, for Devin, for Ryan. He's called out all the guys, not only at 35, but the guys that have moved up from 35. And he killed two birds with one stone tonight. He showed that he can fight with the best at 35 and 40, apparently. So, um, again, some of that hinges on how Hitchens looks against Paro. Um, but anyways, Keyshawn checked a lot of boxes tonight. And this is, this is a, a good formula for, fight, for boxers in America going forward. Fight in front of your hometown and keep showing out in front of your hometown. And eventually, when it's time to fight in Las Vegas in the big fights... You know, they'll they'll spend their hard earned money and, and travel with you. You know, Trinidad would show out in New York and Puerto Rico. Eventually, when it was time to fight De La Hoya and Vargas, those fans came to Las Vegas. Um, Terrence Crawford showed out in Omaha, Nebraska. When it was time to fight some big fights in, in Vegas, they came and traveled with him and, you know, so on and so forth. So. He, he showed a great jab tonight, jab tonight and his jab, unlike Hitchens, who's who's a pretty good 140 pounder too his jab stopped Lemos in his tracks and you know and he was able to turn Lemos a lot his back touched the ropes Lemos was able to get to the body a little bit in this fight but Davis had his elbows tucked in well so it's not like he was landing on the sweet spot to the body and then Davis off that jab showed his off how dynamic and how good he is offensively as a combination puncher a little bit of shades of Terrence Crawford where it's this long-armed guy that has a deep arsenal, a deep repertoire of punches on offense because he gets Lemos, Lemos to his credit, coming to win, coming to take his head off, lunges in with shots, trying to cut the distance, and Keyshawn drops him on a straight right hand. Then he punches in, but he takes chances. He gets hit, and he, he exchanges with Lemos and drops him with a left hook twice. Uh, he, he gets up and falls down again. He actually goes down twice on one punch on the left hook. Then he gets up. And he shows the combinations. He rips a left hook to the body and then throws his right hand, not not like a right uppercut or like a right hook, but something in between the two trajectories, sweeps the right hand and drops Lemos a third time, gets a second round knockout that blows by expectations. And that's what boxing in America needs. It needs guys fighting at their hometowns to build up a foundation of a fan base. And then when the spotlight's on them, either delivering or delivering past expectations, which is what Lemos did tonight. Um, by the way, on the undercard, Abdullah Mason got dropped twice, and that's okay because De La Hoya got dropped by Molina early in his career, Ali by Doug Jones. Abdullah Mason has thousands of miles in front of him before I, you know, we could really put him anywhere near any, either one of those guys, so don't get me wrong. But Kid Austin and Abdullah are trying to get knockouts. They're trying to be exciting. And so early in their development, Abdullah earlier than, than Schofield. Schofield's more grown, has more grown man strength, although he's still growing than Abdullah. But he these guys are getting caught because they're trying to get knockouts. They're, they're trying to be exciting and put combinations together. And that's okay. They both responded well to their knockdowns. So I, I'm not selling any Abdullah Mason stock. But to close on Keyshawn, um, I think in all likelihood, you know, at 12 and 0, even though he looks ready for any of these guys now, um, you know, long arms, combinations, fast hands, good jab, 
to, he's usually a double or a triples hitter, not a home run hitter like Garcia with the left hook or Tank Davis with the power, but uh, always showed good pop, good power. Tonight, he hit a home run in the second inning. So power looks good. Speed looks good. Combinations look good. Jab looks good. He's long uh, and big for the division. Um, but realistically, I think, you know, he's a heavy favorite to beat Denny's Berenchik. I think he beats Denny's Berenchik. Or if Lomachenko is going to retire, he's going to fight for the vacant IBF. I have little doubt that top rank is positioning Murataya and Davis to fight for the WBO and IBF titles. I don't know which one is going to fight for which. And I don't know if Lomachenko is going to vacate, which makes it that much easier for top rank to move one of those guys for a vacant IBF title. But I say all this to say A plus for Keyshawn Davis. Yes, it's Gustavo Lemos. He's not some proven elite fighter, but he looked pretty good against Richardson Hitchens. And Keyshawn Davis just did that to him. And, that, you know, it was a breakout performance. And he looked really good, really exciting. We need more of this. Oh, and another thing, just so it's not all roses and sunshine. And there's a little critique mixed in there, too. Even with the 10 out of 10, there's always something to critique, I guess. Um, there is. So we still didn't get a chance to see his his chin hold up against a, a legit guy with some power and I think Lemos had the power to test that chin but he couldn't get inside Davis stopped him in his tracks with the jab to the head or to the body in the center of the ring and then when Lemos started to take big chances and swing big he ran into shots and got himself knocked out but Davis still has thin legs and those help be your shock absorbers when you take heavy shots Miguel Madueno had power but he was never he didn't have the skills to find the target clean against Keyshawn. So we still got to see if those thin legs at 135, if they could hold up against a legit puncher when they find the mark. But with that said, 10 out of 10, Keyshawn Davis was spectacular tonight. Peace.